Five technical charts in under half an hour. That is our goal today. I've invited a market historian. He's an old school market technician and fundamental analyst to join us. Derek Tan is founder of Timing and You. They turned six this year and he's joining us to demonstrate what cycle analysis is and to demonstrate his approach to analyzing five technical charts that are currently really hot right now. We're going to take a look at the FTSE Bursa Malaysia KLCI index, find out how it's done since uh, the big political news broke yesterday. Microsoft, well, we know the Dow is trading at an all-time high. Uh, meantime, Kathy Woods and Michael Burry are duking it out over whether or not tech stocks are overvalued. We'll take a deep dive into Microsoft and Under Armour shares rallied this past month. Also, because we like to pack as much as we can into our shows, we'll be looking at NVIDIA and the charts of Yang Zichang as well. So Derek studies the workings of markets and asset classes and he shares his knowledge in training uh, so that other people can also use historical patterns and understand market seasonality uh, with a blend that he's created of technical and fundamental analysis. Derek, good to have you join Join us. How are you? Good morning, Michelle. Uh, it's great to be uh, up on Money FM again to share with uh, uh, listeners about yeah five technical charts uh, that we have this morning. Yes. Yes. Thank you for preparing these five charts. Let's start with what's going on in Malaysia, given ongoing political developments there. We saw the FTSE Bursa Malaysia KLCI index yesterday pairing most of its early losses uh, at the close of the trade to remain above the key psychological 1,500 point level. Today, trading at about 1,514, gaining 12 points. Uh, so do you think that the underlying uh, fundamental political developments is relevant, but that the market is reacting to it as if it, it is mere noise? You know, is, is the KLCI still remaining resilient to news of Malaysia PM's uh, resignation? All right. So anyway, uh, this is the uh, chart of the KLCI. All right. As we can see, uh, it's over from 2018 to right now. So as we can see, uh, since uh, 2018, uh, around April, uh, KLCI has been having a lower high and a lower low. That means it has been trending down. Uh, that was probably because of the political uncertainty that, because there was a change in government then, all right? So it came down. And over this region over here, if you look at my cursor over here, that was where early 2020, whereby we had the COVID-19 uh, uh, pandemic, uh, whereby it has a big drop. Of course, at that point of the time, uh, Dr. Mahathir also uh, stepped down and we have the new prime minister. So since then, uh, it has been moving up and up and up. So let's zoom in over this region over here. All right. So let me zoom in, uh, which is here. So as we can see uh, over here, where my cursor is, there's actually... And I, I just have to mention for... Uh, sorry to interrupt, Derek. I just want to yes. mention for our radio listeners, if they're hearing cursor, we can't see a cursor, Michelle. Uh, that's because Derek is joining me live and we will post this video up on YouTube so you two uh, can watch him move his cursor and make these very uh, detailed um, analysis. So we'll put this up for you as soon as we can. So you want to check out Money FM's Facebook page. You want to check out our YouTube page where this will be up very shortly after today. All right, please continue, Derek. Are we in the pandemic yes. years yet or still at 2018? Oh, no. We are actually uh, uh, in the current period. So, oh, okay. Yes. So this is actually the zoom in uh, chart. So we can see that uh, it actually this is what a, a certain chart pattern known as descending triangle. Okay. Also, it has KLCI has completed a descending triangle. This is something bearish, a bearish uh, chart pattern. And uh, since breaking down from the so-called support, it has been drifting down and down and down and down. And of course, uh, yesterday with the uh, Prime Minister uh, resigning, but mm -hmm. uh, of course, right now he's a, a, a caretaker minister, mm -hmm. prime minister. Yep. So what I do see is this is uh, if KLCI is to break this uh, blue circle where this blue circle is, where there's a support of 1483. If this 1483 level were to be taken out, 
we may see KLCI uh, decline further, all right, to the next support zone, which is uh, around 1429 to 1453. I will say this, this level of 1453 is actually a, quite a strong support. Why do I say that? Because uh, there's a, a, a low here which form the support. At the same time, there's also a 50% Fibonacci resistant uh, support over here. All right, retracement support over here. So this 1453 is going to be a, a, a strong support. If this support doesn't hold, it, KLCM may drop a bit lower to 1429. So this green circle of 1429 to 1453, I personally think technically is going to be a strong technical support. All right, uh, uh, for KLCI, if the political so-called uncertainty is going to continue. All right. On the other hand, on the other mm -hmm. hand, if KLCI can break above this uh, uh, orange uh, so-called circle of uh, resistance zone, uh, which is around 1514, then we may see KLCI have a chance to go higher to 1533, which is where the yellow circle is. Also, but I think from this chart, we can see that uh, for any countries, political uncertainty actually uh, do play an important part because this will impact the amount of foreign direct investment into that country. And because of this uncertainty, in fact, for 20 plus months, uh, FDI has been pulling out from Malaysia market, which is which explains why uh, KLCI has been so-called declining uh, since uh, uh, end of last year till now, all right? The, the decline that we're seeing now, nowhere near the seismic huge shocks when Mahathir resigned, right? I can see uh, yeah, from the chart correct. over there. That was uh, much bigger uh, than... Uh, no, he resigned. That, yes. No, after he resigned, uh, 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 that was at the point whereby uh, the market uh, was at the low because of a COVID-19 pandemic. So actually, it went up. It has been going up. It's until uh, end of last year, then it started to turn down with all this turmoil in the political scene, yes. Okay, so we saw late buying yesterday uh, really help the support the KLCI, Petronas, Danganan, Sign Plantation, Tanaga Nacional, late buying support for these stocks help cushion the impact uh, of the resignation of Muhyiddin Yassin and his cabinet, although he will remain uh, caretaker prime yes. minister. So remind us again of that those levels. What is it? One four eight three. Uh, the the uh, very strong support level I would say is between one four two nine to one four five three. All right, that is a strong support level. Yes. One four five three. Got it. Um, I don't know if you can see anything in the charts about you know what you expect to see in terms of recovery for the Malaysian ringgit, which we saw fall to a one year low yesterday on the back of uh, Muhi Yassin's resignation. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> ringgit has uh, been weakening because of all this political uncertainty again. That's why I say, and uh, political uncertainty is not something good for a particular country. So, if this uncertainty were to continue, I think. Uh, uh, ringgit probably is going to weaken against probably the US dollar. All right. Uh, but I do think later on, uh, towards the later part of the year, actually US dollar, based on my cycle analysis, I do see that US dollar is going to so-called uh, weaken further. So in turn, this probably will give a boost to ringgit so that uh, ringgit, uh, USD against ringgit, probably we will see it a uh, so-called going lower. That means uh, a ringgit may strengthen from that. Yes. Right. Right. Thank you for that insight. Because yes. I know you didn't prepare a chart for the Malaysian yeah. ringgit, but thanks for sharing your thoughts there, yes. Derek. Let's move on to Microsoft. We know the Dow Jones Industrial Average has been trading at record levels. And when share prices go up, investors want to know, can they keep going up? So yes. top of the list, I think, is Microsoft. And more than 85% of Wall Street analysts still have a buy rating uh, for Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft yes. shares uh, hovering around the 300 US dollar level. They've been up about 30% since the start of the year. But analysts mm. are still bullish, particularly about Microsoft's cloud computing service, Azure, uh, which we saw tick up, I believe, 50% in the last quarter. So what do you see when you look at Microsoft's technical charts? Okay. Uh, uh, one thing I want to add is this, uh, mm -hmm. uh, 
be, because I do cycle analysis, uh, I, as per my last forecast, I still think that down zone have a target of around 37,000. Last night, we initially, we have a drop of about 200 points, but in the end, it ended up 100 plus points. All right, so uh, S&P has hit my 4,000 too. NASDAQ, I think, is going towards 15,000. So for Microsoft, look at its chart of the last 10 years. Oh, such a beautiful chart. Beautiful. Gorgeous. Yeah. Wow, yes, look at training. that incline. <laughs> yes. Wow, it's no wonder a lot of fund managers, uh, they, they love this chart and they are still bullish about Microsoft. So now, let's zoom in into the recent price action of uh, Microsoft. Yes. So what we can see is uh, actually about uh, on the Friday night, actually, Microsoft actually broke up. As you all can see from the uh, red circle over here, Microsoft actually broke up from a, this one, a chart pattern, what we call a flat base or a rectangle. It actually mm -hmm. broke up. And last mm -hmm. night, it, it, uh, intraday, it came down. But in the end, it closed up again. And that with high in, uh, trading volume. So an uh, increase in price together with increase in volume, there's something positive. Uh, to add on to it, is false index is also turning up. So it looked pretty uh, so-called bullish at this point of the time, all right? So the resistance uh, where the red circle is, is about 291.55. So it actually broke out and last night closed at 294.60. All right, so based on this, ladies and gentlemen, where probably can we see uh, Microsoft go uh, hit, hit uh, going forward? So based on the depth of this uh, flat base, that means we take 29. 1.55 minus the blue support line over here, which is 283.74, the debt. Mm -hmm. We add on to the red resistance line over here. We probably will look at maybe uh, uh, Microsoft heading higher towards 300 level. All right. And if you look at all the moving average, uh, this is the 50 day moving average, this blue line, this green 20 day moving average, all of them is trending up so this this is another bullish sign so technically if we have a uh, were to draw a channel line this uh, uh blue support line over here then from there i draw a parallel red upper channel line also technically we may be looking at microsoft heading towards three around 300 as well also at this point of time microsoft does look bullish and be uh, based on the uh, a flat base chart pattern or be based on this uh, red upper channel resistance line, we probably may be seeing uh, Microsoft heading towards uh, 300 uh, level. Yes. All right. Microsoft shares closed yesterday up 0.6% at 295 US dollars. Thank you, Derek. We are chatting with uh, our guest today. He is Derek Tan, founder of Timing and You, an active trader and investor using cyclical analysis to break down for us the technical charts of uh, FTSE Bursa Malaysia's KLCI index. We've been looking at Microsoft. Uh, we'll look at Under Armour shares soon. NVIDIA and Yang CG. Jung Shipbuilding. That is all coming up right after this. Stay with us here on Your Money. Your Money on Money FM 89.3. Just want to remind you that uh, we've got some packs of Alchemy, uh, a new fibro blend that actually makes your carbs healthier. Uh, coming up for you, each uh, pack worth $100. And that's coming your way very soon, right here on Money FM. So keep it right here with me. Money and Me on Your Money, only on Money FM 89.3. He's the founder of Timing and New Derek Tan is my guest today, looking at five technical charts under half an hour, including that commercial break. 
<laughs> Let's look now at Under Armour. Now, earlier this month, the athletic apparel and equipment maker, uh, equipment retailer, I should say, easily top analyst expectations. It raised its full year outlook. Under Armour has changed its business model a little bit. It relies less on discounters and department stores and very much more on its own retail outlets. Under Armour shares I've been looking at because they've been rallying over the past month. They are up more yeah. than 25%. But most analysts are overweight on the counter and they expect it to rise higher. Under Armour shares closed. Um, I'll, I'll take a check on that for you in just a while. What do you see uh, in terms of Under Armour's chart and are, are you bullish? All right. So uh, this is a chart of uh, Under Armour. It has a very, actually, its chart is very interesting. So because what I do see is it may be, maybe uh, it may be forming what we call a chart pattern called uh, inverse head and shoulder. All right. So this probably is a left shoulder. Then this probably is a head. Then uh, it's probably completing the right shoulder. So right now is if, if, uh, uh, Under Armour can break above this uh, red horizontal resistance line, which is around 27.72, which is where the red circle is. If, and uh, uh, I repeat again, if uh, mm. Under Armour can break above this 27.72 resistance line where the red circle is, then we may be able to see Armour uh, heading higher. Uh, towards this uh, orange circle uh, where there's uh, another resistance level that will be around 32.66, all right? If this bullish momentum can continue, we may even see uh, uh, Under Armour go heading higher towards mm -hmm. the yellow circle where there is uh, another resistance at 44.68, all right? So now the thing is, if this uh, so-called inverse head and shoulder a pattern can play out fully, then we probably may be able to see Under Armour heading higher towards uh, its uh, year 2015 uh, high over here, uh, which is around uh, 40, around $50, which is where the uh, purple circle is. This area is also where if we were to add the so-called the depth of the inverse head and shoulder, that means from the uh, 27.72 to the low of this head, we add the depth of this uh, inverse head and shoulder, uh, which is uh, 27.72 minus 7.15. We add on to a resistance. This will project out to be around $50 as well, which is where the purple uh, uh, color uh, circle is. Also, uh, that is all this bullish scenario uh, will play out if, if Under Armour can clear this 2772 uh, resistance where the red circle is. Yes. Thank you very much. Under Armour shares closed yesterday down by 1.8% at $24.90, $24.90 US cents. All right, we've got a couple more charts to get through, so I want to make sure that we pack them in. Let's look now at NVIDIA, Derek. NVIDIA Corporation is set to report its second quarter fiscal 2020 uh, earnings on, I, I believe it's August 18th. It's yes, coming out correct. soon. Mm. Uh, and this quarter really encompasses a period where NVIDIA has been facing some big challenges. There's the global semiconductor shortage showing no signs of easing. The cryptocurrency market has been in turmoil. Uh, NVIDIA stock had been rallying after the crypto-related slump in July, but I believe it is sliding. It closed yesterday down by 1.8%. No, NVIDIA shares, let's see how it did yesterday, closed down by 1.2% at 199.5 US dollars. So ahead of its earnings, what do you see when you look at its technical chart for NVIDIA? Okay, so this uh, chart of uh, NVIDIA, so uh, this is a 10-year chart, all right? As we can see, it has been trending up nicely as well until probably uh, 2019, a form a base over here. Then it broke out and hit even higher. So, it's, so this is a 10-year view. Now, let's zoom in uh, in the recent time. All right. So, as we can see, uh, very interestingly, uh, as of uh, early July, all right, uh, Nivea has been coming down, found a support at this blue uh, support uh, line over here, 
uh, which is about 178.66, which is where the blue circle is. It rebounded. It came close to this uh, red resistance line, which is around 208.75, which is where the red circle is. Then it has a pullback. So now the interesting this thing is, if we can see Nivea were to go up and break above this red circle resistance line of 208.75, then it will probably complete what I call a chart pattern called cut with handle. It has formed a cup over here. Now it's uh, forming a handle. So we need to see whether Nivea can break above this red circle resistance over here. If it mm -hmm. can, then we may see it go higher. Then how high it possibly may go is, same thing, we can use the depth of the cup, which is we take 208.75, we minus the blue uh, line of uh, 178.66, we add on to the red resistance line, which will end up about 238.84. So the price objective of Nivea uh, may be 238.84 if it can break above this red resistance line of 208.75. All right. Something interesting is this. If we were to look earlier, yep. uh, Nivea also form a base, uh, some sort of like cut with handle. So once it break above this resistance line, can you see it goes higher from here? From yeah, there I can. Onward? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's see whether this time around it can break this uh, uh, red circle resistance of 208.75. If it can, then we may see if maybe if history were to repeat itself, uh, we may see a price objective of uh, 238.84 for Nivea. Yes. All right. So Nvidia shares, as a reminder, closed yesterday down 1.2% at 199 US dollars and 50 cents. Let's squeeze in our final chart for today. Yeah. It's been on the hot stocks to watch list for a while, especially early August uh, yeah. when we saw the main board listed company saying it intends to purchase the remaining 20% stake that it doesn't already own in a shipyard for yeah. 650 million yen, about 137 million Sing dollars. Um, and, and we've seen Yang Sichang uh, shares of shipbuilding. I believe it posted uh, quite, again, 39% year-on-year growth. It mm. released in August for net profit for the half year ended June 30th. So what do you see when you look at Yang Zijiang's technical chart? All right. So this is the chart of uh, Yang Zijiang. So uh, as we can see, it has been so-called hovering. All right. Mm -hmm. And uh, recently, of course, it has a, a, a big boost. But for the last few days, uh, it has been declining. So based on what I see is, it probably may be forming, it may have completed the cup. Also, it may be forming a, a, a handle right now. So what we need to see for Yang Zijiang right now is this, uh, it, uh, it can so-called uh, hot is uh, decline. If it can turn up and break this red circle resistance of 154, uh, $1.54, cent, if we uh -huh. can do that, it may have a chance to go higher to the next resistance, which is where the orange circle is, which is about 1.65. Where it hasn't so, been for a while, right? Yes, like, uh, that is uh, since uh, March last year. Yeah. March mm. last year, all right? So that is provided that uh, Yang Zijiang can break the 154 uh, red circle resistance over here. Also, then it may have a chance to reach 165. Then, if the bullish momentum were to continue, another okay. higher price objective of Yang Zijiang may be we take 154 minus the blue so-called horizontal support line here, which is 136, with mm -hmm. the depth of the cup. We add on to 154. Uh, we potentially may see a price objective of 172. If this uh, 165 uh, orange circle resistance were to be taken out, we may be able to see Yang Zijiang heading higher towards 172. All right. Uh, if we look earlier, uh, uh, before this run up, actually Yang Zijiang formed a chart pattern, what we call a saucer with handle. And since it broke up, while well, it has been going up and up, uh, until recently, until it uh, consolidate. So now let's see whether it can complete this 
possible cut with handle. If you can uh, do that, it may possibly uh, go higher towards 164, uh, 165 or even a higher price objective at 172. Also, this is what I see of Yang Sijiang technically, yes. Bear in mind, Yang Sijiang shipbuilding shares currently trading down 1.4% at 1 Singapore dollar and 50 cents. He is a market historian, old school market technician, and he analyzes uh, with a view of fundamental analysis and historical trends as well. Taking us through five technical charts in under half an hour. We did it, Derek. Thank you very much for joining us. All right. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, uh, I'll be back again next month, so uh, probably to share more uh, charts with the uh, so-called listeners of Money FM. But before we end, can I add something very quickly uh, about yep. the general market? Yes. Okay. So because I do cycle analysis, so uh, this is the latest cycle chart that I uh, 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 so-called crunch. I really need to share this. Why it's important? Because this is not a price chart, but based on cycle chart, I do see that a uh, 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 correction or a vol much bigger volatility may be coming in September. All right, the next turning point is actually towards end of this year. So, ladies and gentlemen, so uh, towards September and probably end of this year, we may see uh, much bigger volatility. So, let's get prepared for that. Please don't see that, oh, US market is going to hit higher, then we are going to get too excited. But do take note, uh, because based on cycle analysis, we may be seeing higher volatility probably coming in September and towards the end of this year. So please take note of this, all right? Well, that was a surprise chart, Derek. Thank you very much for throwing that in. Okay. <laughs> I really appreciate that. Much, He's Derek Tan, founder of Timing and you, and you're listening to Money and Me. It is time for the news and we have to head to it immediately. Let's go. Money FM 89.3